In this lesson, we will solve a recurrence relation when the characteristic equation has a single solution or a repeated solution. In general, when using the characteristic root technique, if we can write the recurrence relation in the form of a sub n plus alpha times a sub n minus one plus beta times a sub n minus two equals zero, then the characteristic equation is x squared plus alpha times x plus beta equals zero. And if the equation has two distinct solutions, or the characteristic polynomial has two distinct roots, r sub one and r sub two, then the solution to the recurrence relation is in the form of a sub n equals a times r sub one to the power of n plus b times r sub two to the power of n, where a and b are constants determined by the initial conditions. But when the characteristic equation only has one solution or a repeated solution, or we can say the characteristic polynomial only has one root, then the solution to the recurrence relation is in the form of a sub n equals a times r to the power of n plus b times n times r to the power of n, where again a and b are constants determined by the initial conditions. So when we have only a single root or a single solution to the characteristic equation or a repeated solution, notice how this second term has a factor of n which does not appear in the general solution when we have two distinct roots or two distinct solutions. As an example, we will solve the recurrence relation a sub n equals eight times a sub n minus one minus 16 times a sub n minus two with the initial terms a sub zero equals one and a sub one equals six. The first step is to write the recurrence relation in the form needed to identify alpha and beta, which means we set the right side of the recurrence relation equal to zero by subtracting eight times a sub n minus one and adding 16 times a sub n minus two to both sides of the equation, which gives us a sub n minus eight times a sub n minus one plus 16 times a sub n minus two equals zero. In this form, notice alpha is equal to negative eight and beta is equal to 16, which means the characteristic equation is x squared minus eight x plus 16 equals zero. And now we need to solve, and we can solve this by factoring. The factors of x squared minus eight x plus 16 are x minus four and x minus four. Notice here we have a repeated solution or a single solution of x equals four. And therefore we use the form a sub n equals a times r to the power of n plus b times n times r to the power of n for the general solution, which indicates our general solution is in the form of a sub n equals a times four to the power of n plus b times n times four to the power of n. And now we need to determine the values of a and b by setting up and solving a system of equations using the initial conditions of a sub zero equals one and a sub one equals six. Let's do this on the next slide. When determining a sub zero, n is equal to zero. Using our general solution, we have a sub zero equals a times four to the power of zero plus b times zero times four to the power of zero, which equals a sub zero, which is one. Simplifying, notice how the b term drops out and we're just left with a equals one. Next, we use a sub one equals six to form the second equation. When determining a sub one, n is equal to one, a sub one is equal to a times four to the power of one plus b times one times four to the power of one, which must equal a sub one, which is six. Simplifying, we get the equation four a plus four b equals six. Well, this system's pretty easy to solve because we already know a is equal to one. Substituting one for a in the second equation, we have four plus four b equals six. Solving for b, we get b equals one half. Now that we know a equals one and b equals one half, we can determine the solution to the recurrence relation. We have a sub n equals one times four to the power of n, or just four to the power of n, plus one half times n times four to the power of n. This is the solution to the recurrence relation. It's important to remember when we have a repeated solution or a single solution, to the characteristic equation, the second term of the general solution is going to have a factor of n, which is not present when we have two distinct solutions. I hope you found this helpful.